In my series on how spark erosion works, I take a first look at what flushing with a coolant does in this video. We saw in the previous video when drilling a 0.5mm, the pole that the particles ripped out by the sparks should be removed from the drilling site. So as a first experiment, I added air cooling to my simple EDM machine. The pump used is designed for laser cutting and with an electrical input power of 24W, it is not very powerful, but the airflow is sufficient to effortlessly blow off an M3 nut. I start the drilling process with the pump turned off. I paused the video when a powerful spark was formed. Starting from the tip of the drill, the material that has been ripped out from the razor blade sprays in all directions. There is only one single image in this sequence that shows glowing particles. Both on the frame before... ...and behind not a single glowing particle can be seen. We want to look at spark erosion scientifically. So let's make a very rough estimate of how fast the metal particles whiz through the air. The video stream is recorded at 25 frames per second, so we are looking at a flight time of 40 milliseconds. The razor blade is about 50 millimeters long. With this scale, the particles flying off to the left and right cover a distance of about 40 millimeters before they leave the picture. The maths is simple and gives us a speed of more than 1 meter per second. It can also be seen that many jets split up after a certain flight distance, the metal particles sputter in the air. There could be told a lot more about this frame of the image, but let's stop here and turn on the air pump. Once again, I pause the video when a spark occurs. This frame shows that the sparks mainly fly off to the left, while virtually no particle beam can be seen to the right. The particles ripped out seem to be effectively carried away by the airflow. However, a second frame shows that this air flushing does not work perfectly. In the case of a particularly strong spark, many beams only bend after a visible flight path to the right, against the airflow. The speed of the particles is initially clearly higher than that of the air jet. Let's take a look through the microscope to see how the air cooling affects the drilling process. The first shot creates a crater that, at around 0.6mm, is slightly smaller than in the test without airflow. This is definitely in the range of variation, because as already noted in the previous video, chance plays a significant role in the formation of sparks. The airflow blows from left to right in the picture which can be seen in the distribution of the black deposits. This becomes even clearer after the third shot. The area around the crater in which the steel turns bluish due to the heat is clearly shifted towards the leeward side. After the 20 second shot, a hole appears in the razor blade. This opening is further enlarged with the immediately following shots. Only a few deposits can be seen at the edge around the hole. By blowing in air, more oxygen is added to the process, which means that the bright liquid steel literally burns. The bore is therefore already completed after only 58 shots. 99 shots were required without the airflow. The resulting hole is still not perfect, but slightly more circular than in the experiment without airflow. The diameter is also around 1.4mm. 
For the water cooling that will be used in the following experiments, I glued a tub from plastic sheets. This is filled with deionized water, which has a much lower electrical conductivity than tap water. In later chapters I will tell you more about why the coolant should not have high conductivity and which agents are suitable. About 2 liters of liquid fit into the tub. The fact that there is a certain residual conductivity even in the deionized water can be seen from the formation of bubbles on the drill to which the 30V DC voltage is applied. The gas bubbles are the result of electrolytic decomposition of the water. If we start the drilling process, a clear click can be heard when a spark jumps over. A double or triple click can be heard from time to time. Let's pause the video again while a spark has formed. It is striking that the particles travel a much shorter flight distance in the water than in the air. The density of water is about 800 times higher than that of air, so the metal particles that are ripped out are slowed down more efficiently. Furthermore, the specific heat capacity of water is 4 times higher, which means that the particles flying around are cooled down more quickly and thus stop glowing earlier. Caused by the water, further chemical and physical processes take place during spark erosion. In addition to electrolysis processes, it should be noted that there is less oxygen dissolved in water, which affects the oxidation of the metal particles. Also, water is vaporized by the heat of the plasma consuming some of the energy otherwise transferred to the workpiece. However, when the plasma collapses, the water vapor condenses again immediately, which at least partially transfers that energy back to the metal and thus contributes to the erosion process. Let's not dive deeper into chemistry and physics in this video and instead have a look at what changes as a result of water cooling. For underwater microscopy I had to attach a tube with a glass button to the lens. As with airflow cooling, the first crater formed underwater has a diameter of about 0.6mm. It can be seen that gas bubbles stick to the surface. The breakthrough occurs on shot number 7 and expands quickly with the subsequent sparks. Because of the gas bubbles, the medium, here the deionized water, is not uniform, which has an impact on the spark formation. The formation of gas bubbles cannot be prevented, but care should be taken to ensure that both these and the particles torn out of the razor blade are flushed away from the bore. What is still missing is a pump that directs a jet of liquid onto the drill. After 69 shots, the underwater drilling is complete. Even if this value is higher than that of air cooling, it is still significantly below the value without any cooling. After wiping away the air bubbles, only a small area around the edge of the hole is found to be discolored. The diameter is slightly larger than in the previous experiments in air. For the next experiments I installed the windshield washer pump from a car to flush the drilling site with water. As can be seen, the gas bubbles are flushed away by the liquid flow. The first crater is comparable to all previous attempts. Shot number 11 creates the breakthrough. Shot by shot, the opening is enlarged and, as usual, sometimes more, sometimes less material is removed.
After 122 shots, the bore is finally completed, the highest value in the test series so far. The diameter is comparable to the test without a pump, but the edge looks a bit more circular and smoother. Apparently, a good portion of the spark energy that contributed to the erosion process in the previous experiments is washed away with the liquid flow. In the chapters on electronics, I will tell you more about why a lower energy transfer per spark leads to better results. What is missing is drilling through a 0.5mm blade, which is 5 times thicker than the razor blade that has been drilled through so far. This deep drilling is extremely accelerated by the liquid flushing. While most of the molten metal has solidified again and again in the drill hole without being flushed, it is now efficiently removed from the hole by the liquid flow. The formation of cracks due to this constant melting and solidifying can no longer be observed. In addition to transporting away the eroded metal, the cooling effect of the water also leads to better results. Instead of the original 7617 shots, the bore is now completed after only 530 shots. Now it works out that for a 5 times deeper bore, only 5 times the time is needed. So far my first chapter on flushing, as always, further information can be found on the Homo Fazien's website. Have a click! And if you think my EDM series deserves more chapters, feel free to click the donate button. Many thanks to all the amazing people who have already supported me and my projects. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!